People tell us every week that our information has helped save their life. If you agree that this is helpful information, please like, share, and most of all, subscribe because nothing makes a channel like subscriptions. There's a significant overlap becoming fat adapted and different types of fasting, including intermittent fasting. And why is that? Again, because once you get beyond the liver's storage of glycogen, you're outside of the carb metabolism and you're into burning fat. So whether you're burning fat from your diet, you know, if you're on a keto diet, you never get into the carb burning mode anyway. So you get fat adapted that way. And people talk about getting the keto flu when they start going into a keto diet. What's going on there? Well, it's a significant change in metabolism, just like the flu. Well, maybe not just like the flu. The flu is changing your metabolism, slowing you down, making you tired, increasing your temperature to have an impact for your immune system. With the keto flu, you've got a major change in your fuel. So you're built to burn carbs and then all of a sudden you don't have carbs to burn. The proteins that burn carbs are very, very different from the proteins that burn fat in our metabolism. And again, we're going to go over some of that over the next few slides as we talk about intermittent fasting and impact on health, aging, and disease. This is a review of a review article. I covered this back a couple of years ago. The day after Christmas that in 2019, this was published in the New England Journal. Prior to that, intermittent fasting was something that people tended to see in terms of, you know, internet docs on the media, but there really was very little academic understanding or appreciation. This article put this on the roadmap for the academic centers. So, and it does a good job of talking about the changes in metabolism associated with intermittent fasting. So let's go into the the content here. IF, or intermittent fasting, used to be internet doc stuff. Then a couple of years ago, it started appearing in the New England Journal. It appeared the day of Christmas in 2019, and I did a video on it. The study wasn't so much a study as a combination of science review, editorial, and a call to action for academic centers to recognize the importance and validity of intermittent fasting. It went into detail on metabolic impact, talking about bioindicators and other evidence of metabolic value. It reinterpreted previous caloric restriction studies, indicated that many actually contained intermittent fasting incorrectly labeled as caloric restriction. Now, how did that happen? That was a simple and interesting concept. Once you begin to go back and look at it, it's like, oh. So, so many of these studies on caloric restriction were done with laboratory models, lab rats. What they would do is they would feed the lab rats once a day and they assumed it was caloric restriction. But what they didn't understand was since they were feeding them once a day, they didn't think about this. The rats ate all the food when it was given to them. If they didn't, the competition, their competitors in the cage would eat it. So they were only eating once a day. Now, let's go into a little bit more detail on the metabolism. So in this slide, you have, it's the cellular response to energy restriction that integrates the cycles of feeding and fasting with metabolism. Total energy intake, diet composition, and length of fasting between meals contributes to oscillations in the ratios of the levels of bioenergetic sensors, NAD. In other words, this is another way of saying what I said a minute ago. Once you start getting into a fasting mode, you're in fat burn mode. Now, I mentioned that we were going to go into some of the biochemistry. Here it comes. NAD, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, changing to NADH. That bond, the NAD to NADH, that bond holds energy. ATP to AMP, that's adenosine triphosphate to adenosine monophosphate. Each of those adenosine and phosphate binds holds energy. And again, what's happening in the fasting mode? AMP. NAD, and in the next one, acetyl -CO the CoA method. In other words, all of these lower energy states of the currency energy in the metabolism give indicator to the cell nucleus, hey, wait a minute, we're in fasting mode. We need to learn how to burn fat. Well, when you start burning fat, when you start activating those downstream energy carriers, also start to activate some other things. One thing you deactivate is insulin and IGF, insulin-like growth factor, number one. But here's some of the stress, stress managers. 
Forkhead Fox OS. What is that? Foxo. Peroxisome proliferating activated receptor. PPAR. PPAR. PPAR gamma. Nuclear factor erythroid, NRF, or NERF. Kinases, you may remember some of the kinases. We mentioned them earlier, AMPK. And the deacetylases, you're not going to remember those. I didn't remember those. But those are the sirtuins. You remember David Sinclair, all about sirtuins. Decades of research into sirtuins, looking for a fountain, a pill of youth. All of these things are stimulated by these lower energy forms, AMPA, NAD+, CoA without the acetyl component. And all of these are stimulated by intermittent fasting. Again, you go beyond that half day mark and you start oscillating into fat burn, which is what you want. You start to get some of these positive improvements in your metabolism. And as we said, the essence of fat adapted.